Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on my YouTube channel Anton GF. My name is Anton Garcia Fernandez and I'm coming to you over YouTube from the city of Jackson in the state of Tennessee in the United States of America. And today we're going to record a podcast in which we will honor British author Michael Farr, who's an expert on Tintin and on the work and life of Hergé, the Belgian cartoonist whose real name was Georges Remy, and he was the creator of Tintin, the Tintin Adventures uh, that began in 1929 and uh, did not stop really appearing until the passing of Hergé in 1983, even though the last completed adventure came out in the mid-1970s. And Michael Farr, in the Anglophone world, is one of the most important writers about Hergé. He has written some wonderful books, such as Tintin, The Complete Companion, and uh, Tintin and Company, Tintin, 60 Years of Adventures, and, of course, as well, The Adventures of Hergé, creator of Tintin. Those are some of the books that he has devoted to the figure of Hergé and to the adventures of Tintin, and, besides that, he's also a very accomplished translator of works by mostly French-speaking writers, who have contributed works on Hergé and Tintin, people like Benoit Peters, for example. Uh, he has translated works by Peters, by Philippe Godin, and by others, because Michael Farr was actually born in Paris in 1953. His father was a journalist, and Farr speaks, besides English, perfect French and also German, and Italian, so this has given him the chance to access uh, some important works about Tintin and Hergé, some of which he has translated and some of which have been important also when it came to writing his own books. Even though he was interested in different topics, theology, for example, also history, uh, also art, uh, he became uh, a journalist like his father and traveled the world as a correspondent, worked for news agencies such as Reuters and also for the Daily Telegraph and spent a lot of time traveling the world as a correspondent. And in the late 1970s, he actually arrived in Brussels and around that time was when he met Hergé himself and uh, years later he would start write, writing books about Tintin and about Hergé, and he has become, over the years, the leading English-speaking writer on the subject, on Tintin and on the work of Hergé. It is interesting to note as well that uh, Michael Farr had the chance to visit, as a correspondent, uh, many of the same countries that Tintin actually visits in his uh, in the course of his adventures and that i think adds more interest to the work of michael farr that and also the fact that farr has had access to the archives that uh, hergé kept over the years and some of his works particularly the complete companion draw heavily on the contents of those archives of Hergé himself. Knowing the man himself, knowing his second wife, Fanny Vlaminck, um, now Fanny Rodwell, did not hurt Mr. Farr either. But the interesting thing about Michael Farr is that he is a writer who is really clear, the clarity of his writing is uh, very noticeable and probably has to do with the fact that he was a journalist for many years and the depth of his research is always um, 
wonderful, and uh, all his books are truly a pleasure to read. They're also edited in a very attractive fashion with lots of illustrations, hardcover books, uh, and of course the text is always interesting and engaging. Michael Farr is not just a good researcher on the life and work of Hergé, but he is also a fine writer. And you can tell whenever you read one of his books. And um, I could be talking for hours and hours about his works. What I'll do is concentrate on two of them that I have right here in front of me. And, of course, I would like to recommend those to you, but uh, I will also recommend any of the others that I'm not going to be talking about as much in depth. Michael Farr's The Complete Companion, Tin Tin, The Complete Companion, that came out in 2001, is, I believe, his most attractive work. Um, the back cover of the book, it says, this is the first book to explore the sources in real life of all the Tintin adventures. And it will delight Tintinologists everywhere. And that is what Michael Farr is. He is a Tintinologist. The interesting thing about this book, Tintin, The Complete Companion, is that Michael Farr actually has created a companion to the adventures of Tintin because he goes book by book, album by album, as they would say in the French-speaking world when describing one of Tintin's adventures. Album by album, Michael Farr describes the work, concentrating specifically on the sources that Hergé used to create some of the characters, some of the scenarios, some of the um, plots, uh, some of the objects that we can actually see drawn in the adventures of Tintin, some of the cities, ships, planes, etc. Farr had access to the archive of Hergé, and that gave him a chance to, in the book, include a lot of documents taken from Hergé's archives. So we can see some of the models that Hergé used, and then next to that we have the actual drawings that Hergé created. I'm looking at right now, for example, the picture of one of the planes that Hergé drew in the broken ear. And then next to that picture we have the actual drawing of that plane that Hergé made himself. We go chronologically from Tintin in the land of the Soviets all the way to Tintin and Alf Art, which is the unfinished story that Hergé left at the time of his passing. Now, this is a book that I highly recommend. Tintin, the complete companion, well written, profusely illustrated, and extremely interesting for anyone who is seriously interested in the work of Hergé and in the adventures of Tintin in particular. Now, we will see, reading this book, that uh, Mr. Farr does include some of his own opinions about each work. He does approach the albums critically, but he is more interested in the artistic side, and also, as I said, in the sources used by Hergé to create these adventures. It is definitely the first book by Michael Farr that any Tintinophile should seek out and read. The second book I would like to concentrate on came out about six years after Tintin the Complete Companion in 2007, and it's called The Adventures of Hergé, Creator of Tintin. And this is more of a biographical work, but it's not your typical biography, because 
if you look at the index, and I have it right here in front of me, uh, after the introduction and uh, a couple of pages where um, Farr talks about key dates in the life of Hergé, then he devotes chapters not to a chronological account of the life of Hergé, but to a thematic account of his life. And that's what I find extremely interesting about this work. It is not your typical biography, as I say. It is a biography that Michael Farr has approached in a different way. He actually starts by talking about the death of Hergé when he passed away in 1983 and the impact that that had worldwide. And then, after discussing his passing and his importance as an author, he goes into different themes, different topics that are interesting, but they are not chronological. Things like the interest Hergé had in art, the fact that he was a journalist at heart, also talks about the lore of the silver screen, so the interest that Hergé had in the movies. Also about the fact that Hergé was a Boy Scout growing up and how that made an impact, a lifelong impact on his life and also on his career, his world view. And also his interest in Eastern civilizations. And something that I find very interesting is the final chapter, which is called An Elegant Joker with a Serious Side. So he talks about the use of humor in the work of Hergé. And it didn't matter how grim the stories were sometimes, how serious, how politically oriented they may have been, Hergé always found room, always found a place for humor. And um, that's what that final chapter of the adventures of Hergé, creator of Tintin, delves into. And it really is a very valuable addition to anyone's library, anyone's collection of books about Hergé. It's a different biography, biography but really interesting and really valuable in its own right. It actually gives us an idea of what Michael Farr thought was most interesting about Hergé and his art. And of course, if Michael Farr was interested in Hergé at all, it was not just because of the man, but also because of the work. And this is something that he makes very clear in this book, which is also a hard cover, and it's uh, also well illustrated with pictures and excerpts from the Tintin books and all sorts of illustrations throughout the pages here. It is uh, not the only biography available in English, but uh, it is definitely a perfect companion to the companion, <laughs> so to speak. So the complete companion is a great work, the Adventures of Hergé, creator of Tintin, really uh, helps understand the figure of Hergé even better. Anyone who is interested in Tintin and who understands English should check out these two books as well as the other books that I have mentioned before and that Michael Farr has written, including, of course, Tintin and Company and Tintin 60 Years of Adventures. Looking at Tintin the Complete Companion, I find here a very interesting acknowledgement section in which Michael Farr talks about certain things that really resonate with me. He says, for example, my sets of Tintin books of many associations and memories. 
A Tintin adventure accompanied by the prescribed medicine is the most satisfactory response to illness. A foreign language can be learned agreeably by reading translations of familiar books. Tintin, or a common regard for him, can even play a part in romance. And for a journalist, especially a foreign correspondent, and that's what he was, he is a constant source of inspiration. I really can recognize myself in these words, uh, particularly when he talks about learning languages. Tintin was extremely important in my learning to speak French, and it still is very important for me when it comes to studying different languages and practicing and reading in different languages. Something else he says in the acknowledgement section I find really interesting as well because he talks about the context in which he actually got a chance to meet Hergé, the man himself. So he says, Farr says, in 1977, I arrived in Brussels as a correspondent for Reuters. There I could live and breathe in Tintin's and Hergé's home city and come across the remarkably modest master himself, soon to be exhausted by the elaborate celebrations laid on for the intrepid reporter's 50th anniversary. It must have been around 1979. So inevitably, my first acknowledgement is to Hergé himself and the wonderful character he created to the delight of so many. I should thank my parents, too, for encouraging an enthusiasm which they shared. And for sure, that happened to me as well, since the first Tintin books that I ever came across were the ones that my father had at home. And he didn't have them all, but... He had some of them, one of them Crab with the Golden Claws, and that gave me a chance to introduce myself into the universe of Tintin, into the work of Hergé, and of course Tintin and Hergé have been lifelong companions for me. So, in closing, I would like to simply stress how important Michael Farr is for the... English-speaking world when it comes to learning about and understanding Tintin and Hergé. He's a good writer. He has a great command of the subject. His books are always well-written, well-researched, and extremely interesting. And I wholeheartedly recommend you're going out there if you're listening to this and seeking out Michael Farr's works on Tintin and Hergé, particularly the two that I have talked about mo most in depth. Tintin, The Complete Companion, from 2001, and The Adventures of Hergé, creator of Tintin. This is a biographical work, a thematically organized biographical work published in 2007. I am sure you'll be glad that you did. My name is Anton Garcia Fernandez, signing off now from Jackson in the state of Tennessee in the United States of America, pray, uh, paying tribute to British author Michael Farr, one of the most important Tintinologists, one of the most important experts on the work of Hergé and the adventures of Tintin, not just in the English-speaking world, but in the world at large. As I said, seek out his works, and if you have read them already, leave some comments underneath the video. I'll really be happy to read them, and I'll be sure to respond to them if you do leave any comments under this video. Thank you very much for listening. This has been a podcast recorded live in Jackson in the state of Tennessee in the United States of America in the month of August of 2021 and very soon you'll be able to listen to it on my YouTube channel Anton GF. Once again, thank you very much for your interest in Hergé and Tintin and so long everybody.